Hey guys, thanks for joining today. A uh, little mini course that I put together called The Basics of Building Wealth Through Real Estate. Uh, so I'm going to try to start doing these once a week in hopes that these will be helpful to you. So we'll jump right in. Um, okay, so the building blocks of real estate wealth creation, um, and these are the basics. If you, if you know a lot about real estate, maybe this is going to be too basic for you, but if you're just getting started, these are the four things, the four building blocks that you need to know. Uh, so number one, equity. Uh, equity, very simply, is just the difference between your home's value and then any loans you have against the property. Whatever that difference is, that's your ownership in the home. And if you sold it, that equity that you could liquefy and, and have in cash. Um, two is appreciation. So appreciation is just the increase in the value of a property over time. Uh, three is revenue. So revenue is just any income produced by your property. A lot of times this is in the form of rent if you're a landlord, if you rent your property out. And then fourth is taxes. And specifically, this is tax benefits uh, that you receive as a property owner, either in your primary residence or if you're a landlord. Okay, so let's talk about equity first. So equity, uh, equity is something that you build over time as you pay down the principal balance uh, of your home. So if you have a 30 year mortgage, every month when you pay your mortgage, you've got a portion of that mortgage that's principal, and then you have a portion of that mortgage that's interest. So interest is just simply the cost uh, of um, uh, borrowing money from the bank. So every month, if you have a 30 year mortgage, the beginning of uh, that mortgage, 30 years, you're gonna spend, you know, 90% of your payment is gonna go towards interest. So that's the bank recouping their costs. And then that 10% that you're paying is going against the principal. So it's actually lowering the amount that you owe on that property. So over time, the more that you pay on that, the longer you live in it, the more your equity you're gonna build because your principal balance is gonna get lower. Um, and so there's a couple things that we can do to increase the equity in our home. So number one, we can pay down the mortgage print principle faster. Uh, so here's a couple really simple ways that you can do that. Uh, number one, and this is what I advise a lot of my clients to do, is you can make bi-weekly payments. And so most time, what people are going to do is they're going to pay uh, their mortgage payment once a month. It's due once a month. It's due on the first of every month. So let's say your mortgage payment is $2,000. Most people would pay $2,000 on the first of every month. Well, what you could do instead is you could pay $1,000 every two weeks. Um, instead of paying $2,000 at the beginning of every month. And the, what that's going to do, is it's actually going to give you an extra month worth of payments every single year. So there's 52 weeks in a year. You end up paying $1,000 every 52 weeks. So you're paying one full month's extra mortgage payment every year. And what that's actually going to do, it's going to speed up you paying off your mortgage by over four years. So instead of a 30-year mortgage, you end up having about a 25-and-a-half-year mortgage. Uh, which is going to save you a lot of money on interest over time. So, and it's also going to increase the amount of equity you have faster because you're paying down more principal. Uh, the other thing that you can do is instead of getting a 30 year mortgage, you can actually get a 15 year mortgage. Um, so that's going to, it's going to cause your monthly payment to be a little bit higher. Um, but what's great about a 15 year mortgage is instead of having mostly interest and then a small portion that's principal that you're paying every month, it actually flip flops it. So the majority of your payment is going against the principal balance. And then a smaller portion is going to be interest that you're paying to the bank. So you're actually building equity in your home. So let's say you have a $300,000 note on your house um, on a 30 year mortgage. That's going down really, really slowly and picking up momentum over time on the 15 year mortgage. I mean, you're, you're cutting chunks out of that principal balance very quickly. Um, so that's a great way to build equity. If you can afford it, um, then I would definitely consider it. The interest rates tend to be a little bit less too. So you're saving a lot of money on interest there. And then the second thing you can do is you can increase the value of your home. So there are some things we can do to help that, some things we can't. The things that we can do to increase the value of your home is just finding areas that we can make improvements to the home that are going to increase the, the property value of the home. So this could look like uh, laying new floors, um, updating the kitchens, the bathrooms, and you might not realize that value right away. Um, but for people who, let's say you invest $10,000 right now in updating your kitchen, in four or five years, you're gonna really see the value of that. And so it's an investment in the future value of your home. Um, the, the second thing is just appreciation in the market over time. So these are forces we can't control. Um, the market generally does appreciate over time. Um, that's not the truth, truth every year. Um, so obviously we went through a recession in 2008, 2009, um, but over time, generally the market does appreciate and that's gonna increase the value of your home, it's gonna build your equity. So let's talk about appreciation. 
Um, so appreciation, when we think about appreciation, we really need to think long-term. So home values double on average, uh, generally every 10 to 15 years. So if you own a home for 10 or more years, chances are very good that you're gonna make out on top if you've owned the home that long. Now, in my world, general rule of thumb is for somebody to break even on their home, they have to own it for at least two years before selling it. And that's just because there are costs associated with selling your home. Uh, but if you own the home for five years, this is what I tell people, if you own a home for five years, you're probably gonna win when you sell. If you own the home for 10 plus years, you're definitely gonna win when you sell. And that's just a, that's a rule of thumb. So own for 10 plus years if you can, if possible. And now I'm not saying don't move. I'm not saying don't up, upgrade your home uh, if your family's growing. But what I am saying is if you have the ability to buy a home and keep your current home as a rental, do that. Definitely consider doing it if you can afford it um, because there's a lot of benefits um, to that. Uh, and we'll talk about those in the next couple sections. Um, but the essence of what I'm saying is think long term. So historic appreciation in DFW is about four to five percent annually. That's not every year. Um, but the longer that you can think in terms of the time horizon, when you own any asset that it can appreciate in time, that's not a, not a car, not a boat those things depreciate in value, but a home over time, if you can think long-term, you're probably going to win. Okay. So, uh, next revenue revenue is simply the income that you can make on your home. So this is when you're owning it as a landlord, generally you're not making revenue on your home. If you're using it as your primary residence, although there's people that I know right now that rent their homes out as Airbnbs. Like if you lived in Austin, for instance, or if you lived, like somewhere uh, close by Globe Life Park or Texas Stadium uh, or AT&T Stadium. Like if we had the Super Bowl here, you could rent your home out with Airbnb and bring in a little bit of income. You could pay down your principal with that. Um, so the essence of why this is powerful is you're letting somebody else pay your mortgage. And if you don't have a mortgage, you're letting somebody else uh, just give you money for using your home. Um, but it allows you to speed up the wealth building process. So essentially instead of you paying out of pocket to pay down your principal and pay the interest on your note, someone else is going to do that for you. Um, really what the goal would be is if you're going to rent out your home, you want to cash flow on it. So that's just cash flow is just the difference between your monthly expenses and your monthly rent on your home. So if your mortgage payment is $2,000, but you could rent it for $3,000, you're getting a thousand dollars a month in cash flow. Um, but what that really allows you to do, if, if you're not going to spend it on something else, is pay down your mortgage faster. So if you're renting your home out for $3,000 a month, your mortgage payment's $2,000, you can use that extra $1,000 and just put it against your mortgage. You could pay it down faster, you're going to pay less interest on it, and you're building that equity faster, you're building your wealth faster. So lastly, tax benefits. Now, I'm not a CPA, um, you'd wanna to talk to a CPA about this, but here's some, kind of some of the basics of the tax benefits of home ownership. So on your primary residence, if you own a home, you already know this, um, but uh, all gains on your primary residence are tax-free. So if you home, own your home and live in it for two plus years, when you turn around to sell your home, anything that you've gained on appreciation of the home or the value that you've added to that home is tax-free gain. So it's income that you're not getting taxed on, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. Um, tax deductions, okay? So the two main ones on your primary residence are your mortgage interest, so the interest you pay the bank, and then the property taxes on your property. You get to deduct those from your income, and then you're gonna pay less taxes every year, which is awesome. You don't get that benefit if you're renting, so that's great. And then uh, if you own an investment property, this is when things get really, really awesome. Um, well, actually there's a combo of things you can do, but one is if you own your primary residence for two plus years, and then you turn it into an investment property, you turn it into a rental, you get two benefits. Number one, if you're to turn around and sell it at any time in the future, all the gain on that home is now tax-free. That's awesome, right? There's no capital gains tax. Um, but if you bought a rental home, so let's say you bought a rental property, it was never your primary residence, it's taxed as a long-term capital gains tax rate instead of income tax rate. So for most people, that's a big savings. Long-term capital gains tax is 15%. Your federal income tax is gonna be higher than that. So that's awesome. Um, you get to deduct a depreciation expense. So this is totally an accounting thing, but every year there's depreciation on your asset. 
and you get to deduct that expense, which is going to save you money on your taxes, any other relevant expenses. So if it costs you money to market it, if you have to pay a real estate agent to market it, um, any uh, things to like fix up the home, all those things you get to deduct from your income. And then lastly, a 1031 exchange. It looks like I made a typo, 1030 and 01. 1031 exchange is what it's called. 1031 exchange just means if you own a rental property and you sell it, you can go buy another rental property with that money. And there's special ways you do this, but you can go buy another rental property with that money. You don't have to pay taxes. You can defer the taxes on that gain, um, which is just going to save you a lot of money uh, over time. So those are the four building blocks of wealth creation. Um, I hope that you found this helpful. Again, this is uh, Ryan Enos with the Enos Group. If you have any questions about it, give me a shout. And uh, yeah, I guess have a great day.